How are we doing, you wonderful people? My name is Jay, and welcome to another episode of Chilling with the Emmys podcast. Now, before we get into the video, make sure you hit the subscribe button and click the little notification bell. That way you guys will receive all the channel notifications and you can keep up to date with all the latest videos. And if you listen to the audio version of uh, this podcast on Spotify, then make sure you hit the follow button to be notified for all of the audio only uploads. And this week, we have a return guest for the first time on the podcast. It has been This is episode six, it's been six weeks. And uh, yeah, we have the return of Nicola Brown. Guess who's back? <laughs> yeah, yeah, all right, calm down. <laughs> so, uh, how's things? How you been? I know it's always weird because yeah. obviously we live together. But yeah, we spoke to the viewers. Thirty seconds ago, yeah, no, I've been good. Yeah, not well, much. Thank uh, you for coming back on. I do appreciate right. it. Uh, you actually, well, we spoke about this uh, was it <clears> yesterday, <throat> day before. Yeah, and there's a few things that you really wanted to kind of bring to our attention for the podcast. Yeah, I just kind of saw a couple new things in the news and I thought, well, that'd be something to definitely bring back up because last, like when I was on last time on episode one, we spoke about the NHS and um, we spoke about uh, vaping in hospitals and stuff. I saw a couple of headlines to do with that. So I thought it'd just be something we can kind of continue, adapt on and then just talk about other vaping bits that we've seen recently. Yeah, makes sense. I mean, I don't really know how this podcast is going to go because of the structure. We usually have the first half hour to kind of get to know the guests. But mm-hmm. if you haven't seen the first episode or the, or the pilot episode, as I call it, uh, which was behind the shelving uh, rather than in the sofas, and it'll be linked below. So feel free to check that out. You get all of Nick's backstory and what she does for a living. Uh, to be fair, it was the pilot. So... I think it will turn out all right. It went okay. Um, I think we were really conscious on time on the first one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So So I I do kind of listen back and I felt like there were certain bits that we didn't finish in a way because I know we just wanted to make sure we covered everything. Um, So, yeah, I kind of, you know, I remember I never, I kind of spoke about the start of my journey. I never actually said where I'm at right now. So Elaborate. This well, is your chance to... Yeah, I know, because I felt like, oh, I, you know, I didn't didn't tell my full story. No, I just wanted to kind of um, finish that. Um, so now I'm kind of one step away from being a registered nurse, really, because I said that I was doing my training. Ooh. I've got like a year and a half left, more or less. Um, nice. So, yeah, I'm a band for assistant practitioner. Ooh, which means I'm a specialist out. in my field. You are definitely special. I know. <laughs> so <laughs> one thing I've been seeing floating around... Uh, especially this week. Uh, If you live in the UK, then you can't really escape that we have left Europe now. The whole Brexit thing that's been going on for, what, three Mm. and a half, four years now. Mm -hmm. I don't really care where you stand, whether you wanted to remain or leave. You're entitled to your own opinions, whatever. Everyone's different. That's fine. This isn't what this is about. The first uh, article that you actually brought to my attention is something I've heard a few people mention over the last few, uh, few days. Yeah. Uh, is what Brexit means for the UK vaping industry. Mm -hmm. Now, for yourself or anyone else who doesn't know, we're currently under the TPD law, uh, which restricts tank sizes, nicotine in certain size bottles, um, advertising laws. It's... Do you want to say what that stands for as well? Because personally, I didn't know what that actually stood for. It's on yeah, one yeah, of the yeah, articles of that I sent you. Yeah, um, I'm literally looking at it now. Yeah, I'm just thinking. It's stealing my thunder. It's fine. So I'm, I was I'm sorry. It. I'm just... It's all good. No, it's all good. This is thinking, what it's like living personally... with this person. Uh, right. So <laughs> I was getting to it. The TPD is the Tobacco Product Directive. Okay. So it's essentially a, a legislation, a regulation uh, that the European body had made that everyone in Europe has to abide by. They basically tied vaping to um, like smoking products. So it restricted, uh, like I said, tank size, the amount of nicotine you can have in certain capacity bottles, uh, advertising laws, things like that. So now that we've actually left Europe, a a few sort of vaping articles have said, well, what does that mean for the UK? Mm -hmm. Like we are technically where we are is Europe, Mm -hmm. but we're not part of the European Union. So does that mean that we can just scrap the TPD? Uh, firstly, I I just want to get your general, before we go into this article, I want to like your general overview of what you think the UK will do. Well, I know that the TPD, just because I was reading about it earlier, is a it's majorly a UK a UK based law law, you know, regulation. We were one of the founding fathers to put it yeah. forward, yes. Yeah. So 
personally, I don't think that should affect it too much because we are now, you know, the standalone UK since we've left. So I don't think that should affect us too much. Um, I know it's going to be affecting a lot of different industries and businesses that have got ties with the EU. Yeah, of course. Um, it's going to be a ripple effect. There's going to be a yeah. lot of changes. And uh, if you guys are listening or, you know, watching, thinking, oh, does that mean I can go out and buy five mil tanks? standard from the shelf no it doesn't mean that you can do that nothing's happened as of yet uh as far as i'm aware they're still going to take the next 12 to 18 months to renegotiate deals with the european union we are in a transition period since officially leaving uh i don't know why i said with air quotations we have left um so yeah i just want to go through this article of what you brought to my attention because it's actually really interesting so um let's start with the process of the uk leaving the european union would of course have some significant effort uh, of the ma- major, of the, I can't even read, the majority of industries within the UK, some positive, some negative. The British vaping industry is regulated by the Tobacco and Regulated Products Regulations in 2016, which is in brackets the TRPR, which is the UK's implementation of the Tobacco Products Directive, TPD. The current version mm-hmm. of the TPD was published by the European Union in 2014. It didn't obviously come into effect till 2016 because it has to go through parliaments. Uh, so as an EU member, state of the UK was obliged to bring these national regulations into force. So it covered tank size, e-liquid bottle size, nicotine strengths, and advertising laws, which were among the restrictions in uh, red, yeah restrictions in place. Legislate. Oh, I can't even talk, man. It's, it's such a bad. Why, why do I read things? Um, you can tell I did not finish school. The legislation has been heavily criticised since it came into force and Brexit could present an opportunity for it to be reviewed. So the next part of the article is, will the TRPR be reviewed? Vaping campaigners are keen for the TRPR to be reviewed as soon as possible after Brexit to create a proportionate regulatory regime. I can sort of read. Uh, Policymakers have agreed to review the legislation on a number of occasions. As part of the Tobacco Control Plan published in 2017, the government committed to reviewing the TRPR once the UK has left, which has now happened. Mm -hmm. Uh, And there's like a little picture here with a little red box for this exact highlighted part, which is in particular, the government will assess recent legislation such as the Tobacco Products Directive, including as it applies to e-cigarettes and consider whether the UK's exit provides opportunity to alter the legislation provisions to provide for improved improved health outcomes within the UK context. That's mad. So I kind of feel like we still need to kind of see what's going to happen because obviously we've only just left. What is yeah. it? The 31st of January. Yeah, left. What, yeah I'm saying it's 5th, the, 6th of well, February. No, 1st of Feb. 1st of Feb, I think. 11, yeah. 11 p.m. 31st of Jan. All right, I'm gonna split heads because they were Brexit. So yeah, parties so it's only been five days. So yeah, it's just this article was actually written um, 2018 in May, um, mm. but a lot of it now is relevant because this person yeah. was talking about it then and yeah. you know, the the potential of whatever happening. But now it's here. We were supposed to leave in October, wasn't yeah, it? Of course. So I think they were probably writing to prepare for that. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of the next part here. So it says a recent article was published titled Britain will always be a world leader in public health and here's why. It was written by Secretary of the State of Health and Social Care, Jeremy Hunt, and he mentions post-Brexit opportunities as he states, we have already committed to looking closely into the legislation of tobacco control, including on e-cigarettes, to make sure we take opportunities to improve outcomes and protect health. Now, if I'm being honest, I know that there's a lot of backlash from you know, a lot of vapors and, you know, just anyone in the industry I spoke to, mm-hmm. everyone was so against TPD when it first came in. Yeah. Now I'll admit, I was working in the industry when the change ever happened yeah. and being in a store, it was annoying. You had to get rid of all the old stock, mm-hmm. bring in all the new TPD compliant stuff. Yeah, I remember stuff. when you had to do that. It was annoying. Yeah. However, what was that? 2016, it's like nearly four years ago. Oh my God. It's mad, isn't it? It goes so quick. Yeah, that is crazy. It's, for me, I think it's, it was the best thing ever. Yeah. It just, for people that are casual vapors, mm-hmm. it makes everything so easy. Yeah. So you can explain it. This is why. Mm-hmm. You know, I still have customers. I had one today saying, oh, you know, the tank sizes. I really want a big tank. And I'm like, cool, well, by law, everything we sell off the shelf has to have two mil of capacity at point of sale. Yeah. However, some of these brands do have extension glasses, which you can then have as a second purchase. I can fit them for you. No problem. It just makes it easier. Yeah. I, I really like the regulations. Yeah, I do remember people just not understanding 
why their I don't know their normal 60 mil bottle that they can get they now have to get it in a 10 mil or they have to add the nick into it I think people are I mean confused with that step having 30 mil bottles a three or a six mm. was quite convenient yeah I mean, no pre-mixing mm -hmm. and yeah that can be a bit annoying I'll, I'll give you that but it really doesn't take any extra time just putting in a nick shot on you like I don't know the people who want it removed completely I just think maybe for the tank capacity I get that yeah, I, I, I genuinely do. I think it's annoying because a lot of companies are starting taking the Apple approach and going, oh, well, the extra, the accessory, the extra four quid, five quid, whatever they charge is for an extension glass when yeah. it should come as a kit mm -hmm. because outside of Europe, it comes in the box anyway. Yeah. So from a like capitalist or business point of view, it makes them more money and that is quite annoying. But if that's one of the loopholes or one of the, mm. one of the things you have to abide by it just is what it is isn't it I feel like it's normal at this point I yeah. mean for, for vapors that have been you know vaping for longer which we have been we've kind of seen both changes um I don't really notice a difference anymore it's just what you have to do and then I feel like all of the new vapors they just know that as a standard yeah of course so I, it, it wasn't something that was like this dramatic oh my god why do we have to do this kind of thing and it makes sense it's to keep us safe it's to keep vapor safe it's yeah, to keep course. the juices regulated yeah. um you know it's to keep even family of vapor safe to make sure that there isn't so much nicotine in certain e-liquids because i know there was a whole thing mad. of like kids trying to drink them or yeah i, I totally get it mm. like all the child safety stuff yeah. makes sense the, the one thing i think is so mad is before the tpd you could go out and get 24 milligrams strength like when I look back, who I think the who hell? vapes 24 yeah. milligram. Like it is so crazy. I barely know. I know a few customers on an 18 milligram if they're on mm -hmm. like a starter pen because they're lower powered and they need that extra hit. The average consensus for vapors now, the highest I really serve like commonly is either a Nixel, which is 20 milligrams, but obviously no throat hit. Um, 10 milligrams for an Ixol or a 12 milligram PG and the rest is all 3 milligrams because yeah. all, all the vapors that were starting then they're just vaping they've been well they don't, they've found their level yeah, and, they're and it's all short for 3 milligram yeah. now the last bit of this article says what does the IBVTA want to happen okay so Gillian Golden was asked economically is this an opportunity for the UK vaping industry and she quotes, the UK has a, has a thriving independent industry that provides consumers with a wide range of quality products. The vape industry is now the fastest growing in the UK and in the United Kingdom is the world's second largest market for vape products after the United States. Little shoehorn here, mm -hmm. read an article the other day. In 2019, the UK uh, spent the most money globally on e-cigarette products. How amazing is that? That is amazing. Reading that and knowing that that was in May 2019, and that's before the whole... Uh, oh, 2018? Yeah, yeah. That was in May 2018? Yeah, it says at the top. It was written by a lovely oh. lady called Rachel Davis. I on thought the it was last May. year. It's all good. No. Oh, so oh. It's still relevant because yeah. it's now come to the forefront of so what was going on. So I definitely on. think that that's probably changed with the whole US flavor ban and the whole issues that they had. Do you really Honestly. think that they're still... Number well, one, I don't well, know that well, like, that was a very big. It was massive. It even affected in our nation, the US vaping industry. Yeah, it even affected us mm -hmm. um, as an industry in the UK. And I think to, I feel as though we've rebounded from that very strongly, very quickly, because um, it could have been a lot worse. And I think it's because the UK, like people like Public Health England, Cancer Research, the NHS, World publicly, Health Organization. Yeah, World Health Organization. I personally am a bit meh. They've got a very They've got a long anti-vaping backstory. Oh, really? Yeah, it's oh. a bit... I never That's really trust it. That's something I personally use as a trusted source you do. Yeah, for yeah, yeah. When it comes to my vaping, healthcare research. So, I'm a bit, but eh. I've never really but seen anything on there for But in terms of what I call vaping. the big three, you know, Public of England, mm -hmm. Cancer Research, NHS, yeah. publicly supporting vaping mm -hmm. and, you know, proudly putting out the, the research that they've found. Um it makes me feel great. It, it, that's helped us push back this US flavor ban because, yet yeah. again... The US seems to be a place where they can have all of the evidence, all of the the truth in front of them and still ignore it. Like they know it's vitamin E isotate that's causing these issues. Mm -hmm. They don't have the same regulations as the TPD. Yeah. Therefore, they have this flavor ban and something that's a knee-jerk reaction that affects so many livelihoods. I mean, you look at the vape rally, how many people turned up at Trump's front front out like yeah. front doorstep and was like, Yeah, flavors don't mean like they helped me quit. They yeah. do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um which is absolutely unbelievable. If I had the money, I'd have gone. 
Like it would have been unbelievable just to see that many vapors that care about the industry pushing forward. But she goes on to say, um, in terms of the local commerce, vape shops are one of the few growth sectors. The UK independent vape industry has a worldwide reputation for quality and innovation. Add to that the well-informed approach taken by many public health actors to vaping and positive attitudes of Public Health England, the medicines in the health regulati- regu- regulatory agency and our Minister of Health, and you see that the UK really has the potential to become a world leader in vaping, both to influence the global political environment and to increase exports and stimulate the UK economy. She was also asked about what the IBVTA's hopes Uh, and expectations are regarding the UK's release from the obligations of TPD. Uh, And then she quotes, it is essential in the Brexit negotiations that the government does not accept any agreement which the UK is still bound by the EU tobacco control policy. Uh, IBVTA members are currently exporting from the UK to countries across the EU, and we will continue to be part of that forefront and cooperation for the European Commission on policy and taxation issues on behalf of the independent vape industry. We will also continue to advocate for a new proportionate regulatory regime and work with like-minded independent industry members to achieve this. Vape products in the UK are regulated under the TRPR, which has resulted in very implement for, which is implemented from the implementation of TPD in the UK. So some aspects of the TRPR, namely e-liquid analysis and reporting, are sound. However, arbitrary restrictions on the size of bottles and reservoirs Restrictions on nicotine content and the prohibition of advertising far from making vaping more attractive to smokers or less harmful than smoking make vaping less attractive and more expensive. It's a lot of words. It is a lot of words. <laughs> She's got a point though. You've done well. She's basically saying the TPD is great, but for the UK, with yeah. the position we're in, we need to be able to change the advertising laws because yeah. we're such a pro-vaping nation. We need mm-hmm. to be able to advertise that and say, look, it's the safer alternative. It's better for you long term. Blah 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 blah, uh, which we can't do right now. And they're even saying uh, we've asked the government to remove restrictions on bottle size, tank size, and nicotine content. Uh, we also wish to return to the advertising restrictions set out by the Committee on Advertising Practice (in brackets CAP) guidelines, originally released on October 9th, 2014, to only uh, and to only carry nicotine warning labels on products that actually contain nicotine at the point of sale. And that is one thing I really. Right really hate how many times have you seen in the shop like a tank mm-hmm. right it's just a tank yeah because it's got a nicotine label on it yeah what it does not contain nicotine but we have to because of the you and, and your standard like so stupid. your standard like 60 mil bottles they have that on there as well before you've even added the nick shot right no no they don't zero milligram oh right They're okay. sold as zero milligram right okay the nick shot is an, is an additive yeah do you know what i mean mm-hmm. so anything a kit uh for example ul crown pod system mm-hmm I get them in, uh, they've got at the bottom a third of the box because we're in the TPD, yeah. nicotine, yeah. you know. Yeah, now, no, some remember. of them have changed to nicotine may be added, which is a slight, well, it's yeah. better. But have, why is there a nicotine warning on there when there is um, no nicotine in it? Yeah. Liquids, yeah, I get it. it physically, yeah. is nicotine in you there. Haven't... But kits, it's so daft. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, you want to buy the Cerberus tank? And then you look at the, a third of the box and it's just a nicotine like, uh, warning and you think, yeah. but there's nothing in there that contains nicotine. I was just saying before we started that we're definitely repping um, you well at the moment. We've both got two. I love you well. Both I mean, got you two guys know it. The... You all know it as well. I work very closely with them. I love them. We just recently got the, the Crown Pod system. If you want to check out the review, it will be in the description. Really, really rate this. Good bit kit, to be fair. I don't know if I had this in the last one, did I? No, you... Um, I had my old You've um, nicked my nunchaku. white and chrome Valerian 2 kit, but you've put a, the stainless steel nunchaku 2 on it. And honestly, uh, it looks yeah, beautiful. It's lovely. I love it. Nice. It performs really well. It does. Forms you really, said you're really only well. going to keep that the flat. So why is it here? Because I wanted to use it. Mm-hmm. I don't rarely bring it out the flat. No, this is my. This I'm is just, my. I'm just pulling your leg. This is my home vape. I want to keep it nice and pretty. Oh yeah, I'm pulling your leg. So, what are your thoughts on that? Now you've heard the whole article. I know it was a bit wordy. Do you think that the UK should essentially make? keep the TPD as a base and then adjust it for what we need? Or do you think we should stick to the TPD? I mean... As it is. I think it works as it is. Um, When it was kind of going into um, possibly changing the tank size, the the bottle size. So essentially when you buy a Cerberus, it Mm -hmm. comes standard as 5 mil because that's how it's intended to be sold. I quite like that. Because to be honest... I quite like that. I, I mean, 
I kind of never understood because I feel like the majority of the tanks that we buy, we normally do then get the bubble glass yeah. because it's become who wants to be filling up every two minutes kind yeah, of thing. Yeah. Um, so that I do agree with. The whole um, 10 mil nicotine bottles, I don't think should be changed I think that's because standard. of the original, yeah. you know, purpose to I, keep it I wouldn't want child safe, basically. Yeah, I wouldn't want an experience, inexperienced vapor to walk around with mm. a short fill of six milligram and yeah. not quite fully understand yeah. the dangers of what could go but wrong. I think with the tank size, I think Tank size, why not? definitely. The mm-hmm. nicotine content, because that means, you know, having our own regulations where we have like 24 milligrams. I think that should just no. We no. should keep it to 6, 12, 18. Um, 20 milligram is the limit for Nixalts. I, yeah. Yeah, I think that's perfectly fine. There's no need for any more nicotine now. No. Nixalts are a genius invention. Yeah. And if most I have, people are on to 10 milligram. Yeah. If I have too too much of a 20 milligram Nixalt, I get a bit dizzy. So I couldn't imagine anything more. So. Exactly that. Exactly that. Now, we also have uh, an update which you brought to my attention earlier. Oh, yeah. So in our last podcast, we spoke about uh, how the NHS supports vaping. Uh, and one thing that I brought to your attention, which I don't think you were aware of at the time, uh, was Colchester's Hospital, which is one of our locals, Yes, has big banners down each side of the entrance. And mm-hmm. it says, you know, vape zone, you can vape here, but it's completely smoke free. So you cannot vape, uh, cannot smoke anywhere on that mm-hmm. campus. But you can, there's actual vaping zones. Yeah. And you said you hadn't seen that. It, no. From what your experience with your hospital, they are very lenient with it. They like yeah. to encourage the vaping rather than smoking. Yeah. Uh, but you said you've got some more news on that. Well, it wasn't actually on our hospital. Okay. It was the article I sent you. Sorry, I didn't. I, oh, you sent it to me. Yeah, I did send it to you. I'd say I'd read it from my phone, but we found that if uh, phones get a bit too close to the mics and a bit of, interview, bit of interference. interference comes in. Oh, there it is. Um, so it is a Derryford Hospital. I just think it's quite good because I was just reading through um, BBC News earlier and I saw that that was an article from 22 hours ago or something. Oh, yeah. Um, 31st of January 2020. Derryford Hospital allowed to allow vaping in the grounds. Uh, this tobacco, this hospital, this tobacco is t- hospital free. <laughs> this hospital is tobacco free site and it's got a nice uh, vaping logo and a vaping permitted. Please vape respectfully. I like that they've added that. Yeah. I just like that hospitals are adding these oh, yeah. items. I love it. Um, to show the difference yeah, and yeah. to show that the NHS is respecting it. Because like I said, at my hospital, it isn't um, very... Sorry, there's no wigs again this week, so I'm just checking on the, <laughs> on the counter to make sure we do not run out of time. I'm there isn't... So far away. Um, Carry on. There isn't obvious signs that say, do not vape here, it says do not smoke here. But from what I have seen around the hospital, people don't really care um, yeah. as long as it's not inside. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, like most places. Um, but no, I think it's just good that that has made vaping news in the UK, that this hospital. Um, I just think it's educating people. 100%. More educating current smokers. Yeah. Um, because I feel like people think, oh, if I, if I can't have a fag here, then why can you blow your cloud here kind of thing? Yeah, yeah. And I think it's good that this is kind of making the news to show like there is a difference. We condone vaping, but we don't condone smoking here. Yeah, yeah, of course. One thing I've noticed as well um, in this store specifically, if any of you guys work in the industry, if you've noticed a very similar trend, then please let me know in the comments. Just interested to know. The UK signed a treaty two Mm -hmm. years ago, and not a lot of people know this. I think it was late 2018. It kind of slipped under the radar because the whole Brexit talks and things like that and taking all the mainstream media. The UK signed a treaty. Uh, I think that's the right word. I'm not sure. Sounds like a bloody like, right. urban law. Yeah. Do you know yeah, what I mean? I know. They basically <laughs> passed a law to say that by 2030, the UK will be completely smoke free. And a lot of people in the vaping industry were like, this is awesome. Mm-hmm. That means that this industry is going to yet again grow even more because it's the most successful way to make the switch other yeah. than patches and tablets. And, and I know, think that, that slowly... Sprays. I mean, you've seen... Well, this is what I was going to say. So in this month alone, and you know, the back end of January, they announced that as of the 1st of May this year in the UK, they are making menthol cigarettes illegal. Uh, Yeah, illegal. So what what a lot of customers have come in for, uh, I would rather make the choice myself Mm -hmm. rather than forced out by not being able to buy them. I want to make the switch and have a menthol flavor. Yeah. And I think that's brilliant. I think that's so good. It's fantastic. You think over the last couple of years, they've... um, up the prices of cigarettes mm-hmm. but people still buy them because people it's crazy. you know it is crazy thing, but I just, I just think it's silly like i think going back and buying a box of 10 for like five pound six pound but then a box of 20 is like put it in the perspective tenner now like when, when we gave up yeah a pack of 20 was seven pound 50 ish yeah on average yeah they're now 10 pound a packet that's ridiculous so if i carried on my smoking yeah. habits of a pack a day 
That's seventy pounds a week. That's crazy. On tailored cigarettes. That is so crazy. That's seventy pound a week. Now, if I was to put that into vaping terms, in terms of e-liquids and coils, mm-hmm. I would have to buy like four or five short fill bowls mm-hmm. and coils to match what I was spending. Yeah. And I'd never get through five short fills a week. That's ridiculous. No. Even if I was using a dripper, I wouldn't be able yeah. to get through that much. No. It's insane when you, th- you think of the comparison. No, I've had a few is. customers like, oh, I buy so much, it, it doesn't work out any cheaper. I'm like, trust me, it's pretty much impossible oh, to yeah. spend the same money as yeah. smoking. It's crazy. Yeah, and the fact that, so they've kind of upped the prices and then people, and they're like, okay, people are still idiots, they're still buying it. And then they're like, right, well, you can't even have a 10 pack anymore. You've got to pay them more. And have double, for the, yeah. For the 20. And then they start taking um, out a few. So it was like 19 yes, packs, 18 yes, packs. I know. So you can't even get a pack of 20 anymore. It's like a pack of 18. You think, what? And it's still even more and money. Yeah, and even more money. It's crazy. And now they're doing the whole um, However, banning of the menthol because the amount of friends that I know that still smoke, all their smoke is menthol. Yeah, because tobacco so, tastes horrible. Yeah. But you don't realise it until you come away from it. No. We have got it lucky though. In Australia, a pack of do- a pack of uh, twenty cigarettes is forty dollars. Oh my god! Forty dollars. That is crazy. So I'm really like Mike um, aware because Jay well, picked well, on me last time because yeah, apparently I wasn't like, close enough to the mic. This far away. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm like just be a bit close. <laughs> so now I'm it. making sure it's close, and I keep on knocking it, and I keep on moving it, and <laughs> it's not easy having a mic like in your bubble. She doesn't do podcasts very often. We'll let no. Her but is there <laughs> anything else that you want to? talk about before we go into the next segment of this of podcast mm. i don't know really cool i don't think so i think it was those two main things is there anything you want to kind of anything else you've kind of read I'm, this I'm week pretty, i'm pretty kosher to be mm. fair yeah yeah i mean i brought those two things to the table so. yeah all right <laughs> i'm still waiting to, to get a few guests on um it's just our schedules haven't lined up yet. But I think in the next month. Oh, it's going to be mad. Yeah. I've got some really exciting got podcasts good, coming your way. But there was just two minutes. We're going to have a quick break and then we'll be back for the main topic of this podcast. And welcome back to the main topics of the Chilling with the Owners podcast. Now, I actually made a little bit of a mistake because... With this podcast, Nick's already been on. We usually do the get to know you section and then we do a main topic. Then we do Sherlock Holmes. Now, because we've already done the get to know you section, what we just spoke about was meant to be the main topic, but it's fine. We have more to talk about. And in the main topic, we were just discussing off camera about what we can actually talk about. Uh, not that we run out of ideas, but it's just we kind of threw the structure off I kind of thought that we were going to chin wag a little bit in the first part, like, you know, the getting to know you part, yeah, talk a little bit more like we started off with. And then yeah. I thought we were going to talk about this then because it was more just kind of general chit chat, talking about what's going to be happening and then get into the main topic. But, but oh, well, we have something I'm so excited about. And you've been so wanting to go about. to one of these for so long. Yeah, we are going to talk about London Vape Expo or Vapor Expo, mm-hmm. which is happening on the 15th and 16th of February. Now, In I've London got Olympia. so much, oh, so much content coming for you guys, which I'm so excited to even, I didn't even start recording stuff for it, but I'm already planning and prepping what we can yeah. do. So I want to say a massive thank you to Phoenix and EL Science for, for actually going. They're sending me and Nick as well. They're sending Nick up with us, which is fantastic. Which I'm really Unreal. thankful for because I didn't have to. No, I, know really didn't. I know they're sending a couple of obviously managers and everything. Yeah, yeah you've got the directors really nice. going up. Mm-hmm. You've got me, you've got Pete. You've got yourself, you've got James, and you've got Dave. It's going to be such a good team going up there. I've never been to a Vape Expo ever, which is strange because I've been in this industry yeah. for like four years now and I've never been to a Vape Expo. And I, I, purely because I've never had cover on the weekends they fall on yeah. and all the regulars go, I can't, and then I have to hear all the stories about how good they are. The amount videos. of times that we have wanted to go just off our own backs and oh, but wow, there's this, this Vape Expo. I think it was last October, was it? Uh, yeah, they usually do them in October. April, October, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That um that we saw and we was like oh let's try and go but I think you were working that weekend yeah. or or I was and it's always that Story kind of, of my yeah life. <laughs> but this year uh, this one is the first one they've done in February I believe uh it's in the London Olympia if you go into any local Phoenix vape stores or if you just contact me directly in the comments I have got so many free tickets to give out for you guys courtesy of Phoenix mm-hmm. and EL Science uh, I've recently done a giveaway on the channel as well if you haven't seen it just so you know that I'm still giving out these tickets for Expo. I want to see as many of you guys there as possible. We've got so many regulars and friends coming up. Yeah. I'm so excited, like genuinely. Uh, and it's just going to be good to, to spend that amount of time 
with yourself, with our managers, with all the community we've got up there. It's going to be amazing. And uh, I really don't know what to expect. I mean, I kind of do, kind of don't. Um, and I actually got sent something today. I don't know if I meant to show it on camera. But I'm going to do it anyway uh, because, well, what are they going to do about it? Uh, <laughs> I'm going to be wearing it at the expo. But I actually received, we're going to be promoting the Z-Virus range. Uh, if you guys are aware of that in the Phoenix stores. If not, it's an incredible range. You need to try it. We've got it in 100 mil short fills. Got a surprise for the expo, which I'll no doubt be doing a video for within the next week or so. Mm -hmm. uh, but they actually sent us, they've got these um, these hoodies uh, made up and they look so dope. So I'm sorry I if this is the audio only. Virus, and I this. think that's like the How cool one of the OG look? kind of juices that I remember oh, in I Phoenix. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, it, it, it was actually a juice we had years ago. Um, and in all honesty, I'm pretty sure they won't mind me saying this. It wasn't that great. It was all right. It had a lot of fundamentals mm -hmm. there, and it was it was pretty good. But in today's standards, it was like it's not where we need yeah. to be. So they completely redeveloped it, uh, reformulated it, sent it out, and wow, it's so, so much better. Mm -hmm. Brains, the strawberry cotton candy, oh my god, it's so good. Uh, I don't want to make this just a big plug about it, but that's what we're going to be going up there doing. Uh, I want to meet as many of you guys up there as possible. I think it's going to be great for us. Yeah. We're going to go anyway. Yeah. Um, and I kind of like forced. My boss used to be like, can we take the missus? Because I was going to take her anyway. <laughs> and I don't want to like kick her to the side because I'll be in the doghouse. So he's been very kind to let you come up. Um, I don't think Nick he quite realizes uh, that she's going to be a camera woman for the, for yeah, the weekend. Which I've been be told. It's going to be so cool. I've not had a vlog where I'm actually in the frames all the time. I'll be there with like boom mic. And, no, it's you not know, that extreme. <laughs> Uh, there'll be a few things but I can't wait to go up I want to meet some other vapors in the community I want to meet some other vaping YouTubers if they're going up I'm all for just saying hello and just kind of letting people know that I'm there I, I how exist. about you um, talk about a recent UK vapor YouTube like a uh, YouTuber oh, yeah. Um, yeah yeah who's so, in the vape um, industry that's recently contacted you for any of you guys that are into your UK vape scene uh, and follow a lot of YouTubers the Devil Vapor recently subscribed to the channel so shout out to you man thank you very much for your support I really do appreciate it uh, he watched the vaping tier list video I did yeah. uh, and was like oh my god have I not seen this sort of thing uh, it was a bit of a surreal moment I was like wow what? like you're watching my videos that's that's mad yeah uh, and he followed me on Instagram I've DM'd a few times seems like a nice guy so if you are going mate I will find you and I will say hello <laughs> don't worry there's nothing, I will find you yeah there's <laughs> nothing aggressive in there I will find not you and I will say hello um <laughs> But I don't know who's going. I'm not in that scene yet. And no. I'm, not, I'm just doing my thing. I'm just I think doing it's going to be good though because obviously you will be there for the business mm -hmm. um, and you'll be able to, you know, promote the new ideas that the business yeah, of course. are talking about and everything. But then you'll also kind of hopefully have time to kind of go away, enjoy yourself as well. We can kind of go away. My job explore. is to literally film everything. Mm -hmm. That's what I bring them in. Yeah. Social media manager. I, yeah. It's part of my new role. They've, they've been very, very kind and welcoming into using the channel wherever I can. And, which is really, uh, which really is good. Which is amazing. I'm it so really happy is. that. Um, and they give noticing. me this freedom to, yeah. to create content mm -hmm. for the business and for myself because they know it's a community driven thing. It's something I'm very passionate about. And I just can't wait. I really can't. I can't wait to say hello to everyone. But um, how are you feeling about it? I'm excited. Yeah. It's, it's nothing that I've ever, you know, done before. Um, it's, it's going to be exciting to see what's there because I don't really know what to expect, to be honest. I know there's going to be different stalls and there's going to be a Phoenix stall, oh, right? Yeah, so yeah. our stall, mm -hmm. oh, it's mad. <laughs> so for the first time we've been there, right? Yeah. Um, I don't even know if I'm allowed to say this. I, I really don't, but I'm going to anyway. <laughs> I'm just excited. <laughs> so our floor plan, I won't tell you whoever, who else is there because that I definitely can't say unless they actually say they're there or whatever. But for Phoenix's stall, EL Science's stall, You've got the main entrance mm -hmm. and we are the first store on the left. Oh, wow. So as soon as you come in, we're there. Like we are right by the, by the front door. And I, uh, it's That's really easy good. to find. Because without like sounding rude, when you go to kind of these things, you, you kind can of easily get look lost. around, you get lost. And by the last one, you're like, oh. Like, because you've seen so many. I'm just worried about Which how much money so easy, that we so must much spend. Easier to, because... Oh, mate, we're going to spend so much money. <laughs> Uh, also, the guys at Aspire are going up there. So it'd be nice oh, to brilliant. meet them face to face. Oh, uh, guys at UL, I believe yeah. one of their teams is going. So it'd be nice to, to mm -hmm. catch up with those. Um, just a few companies that obviously have worked with the channel, with myself, with obviously Yale Science. Kind of all merges into one now, which yeah. is just mad. Which is going to be crazy. Um, it's going to be so cool to put a face. Full circle. Yeah, just put the face yeah. to the name. And, mm -hmm. and like I said, just talk to as many people as possible. I can't wait. Um, I'm so excited. Plus, we get a weekend with James and Dave, which I've never <laughs> experienced. You've never experienced. It's going to be amazing. Um, 
I've only met Pete once. Yeah. Seems like a really nice guy. So that'd be interesting. And obviously, Sean is a nice bloke. Andrew is a nice bloke. I don't know what they're like outside of work, obviously. Yeah. The, my, my directors only see we'll them see. in yeah. terms of work, but it should be a really good one. And weekend. I've never met any of these people apart from James. So we'll see how it goes. That's going to be I'm awesome. going to be the only girl there. I can't wait. It's going to be so I'm going to be good. fucking surrounded. I'm going to be weird. Sorry, I, swore. I just realized. It's all right. We yeah, I was going to say that. I was like, it's going to be a bit of a dick fest, but I'm like, I probably shouldn't say that on the podcast. No. And I just did say that. I'm no. sorry. It's all good. <laughs> we, we kind of been the. I want to try and keep it as clean as possible. And then I realized it's an adult only podcast. Yeah. Vaping's in our adult industry. So let's just keep it as real as possible. Yeah. So if you are easily offended, um, I apologize. But oh well, deal with it. Deal with it. Deal with it. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I don't know what I'm looking forward to the most at Have Expo. I think it's just meeting people. I'm, yeah, I just cannot I think, wait. I think you're going to be able to kind of make new. You, you're going to be able to meet the people, like you said. You, you've, you're going to be able to put a face to a name. Um, you're going to then actually probably meet new people. Yeah, of course. Maybe you know find new links or anything like that. You're going to be able to c- promote this business as well as promote your channel. It's going to be amazing. You're going to get some sick shots because I know what you're like. Oh, that's what going around be. with some b-roll do you know yeah mate <laughs> I've, I've already got in, in my head i'm thinking of doing like a three-day documentary mm-hmm. putting it together and, and doing it that way um i think that'd be pretty cool it's, it's next weekend right is it weekend it's the after? 15th and the 16th so what's it now oh it's no it's next week no it's in 10 days so is it next week yeah I don't know. yeah Maybe. it is, I think yeah, it is it's, next weekend it's next my week. god that's come around quick oh my god and that's it's our so anniversary quick. next week as well thank you for reminding me <laughs> <laughs> So that, it's going to be a busy weekend. So anniversary is on the Friday and then Vape Expo is on the Saturday, Sunday. Yeah, boy. So we're going to have a nice spa day on the Friday. Chill. It's kind of good we're doing that because it's like, yeah. one, it's an anniversary, so nice to do. Mm-hmm. We usually do a city break, but, but yeah. this year we just can't. Just save uh, for the wedding, for a and wedding which yeah. is... Uh, Crazy. Yeah, it's mad, really. <laughs> There's still a documentary about that whole process I'm still working on. I just haven't yeah. had the time to actually edit it. So I'm sorry. It will come out. This when I year, can get it out. last year was just crazy. It's mad. So much happened last year and everything for the better. So many opportunities. You know, so many doors have been open for you, which I'm so happy about. And we've had, we're one month what into are we talking 2020. About? Like, you graduated. That's sick. I know. I know. But like, I'm, that I'm trumps still... everything. Like, you no, got a degree, it doesn't. Bro. No, you it doesn't. You've got a degree. That's I know. Amazing. I know. But you've done, like, you've done so much as well. Yeah. And the fact, like, the amount of, obviously, I know there's certain things that you won't talk about yet, but the amount of um, kind of opportunities that you have been offered just in January al- alone, you're one month into 2020. It's going to be an interesting year. So I think for you, this year is kind of like, I don't know, I kind of see 2020 for me as like a in-between year kind of thing. Okay. I, there's certain things that I'm more looking forward to after 2020. Not saying that I, you know, want to wish 2020 away or, you know, not enjoy it. And there may be certain things that come up. We don't know. But um, for me, it's more kind of just carrying on, plodding along finish my course this year's gonna be mad i finish my course technically next year so so that's when i feel like that's gonna be like that's my end goal you know that's my end my can't speak you know it's all good my thing to look just, forward just let to yourself tire out it's all good <laughs> and um, then the year after it's a wedding it's gonna be crazy so, like, this year because of you guys honestly you guys are amazing uh so much support on every video that goes out mm-hmm. the new subscribers the old subscribers friends family everyone the community we're building is insane uh and and like nick touched on i've got some amazing opportunities for this year if mm-hmm. i just play my cards right or if i just keep doing what i'm doing i just want to be a guy in the industry that's good at what he does i like cinematography i love, love vaping i want to mm-hmm. mix the two do you know what i mean so yeah it's gonna be very interesting very interesting i'm excited I'm already tired to the point where I need a holiday just to sleep. I know. Um, I know. But this it's is, be worth this it. is why, this is why it. I honestly just recommended a spa day. Because yeah, Jay's never had a spa day before. He's like, oh, I don't know how I feel about it. But honestly, you will enjoy doing absolutely fuck all for one day and just plodding along in a spa. Is, well, if we go, when, when is it Friday? Yeah. As long as there's a video up for Friday. I'm not missing an upload. Of course, that's what you think. <laughs> well, of course, it is. It's yeah, Friday. But you, you, nine I can times schedule out, it. Nine times out of ten, anyway, you have your video ready on Thursday nights. So, I mean, I've got two deadlines. I mean, I try. Sometimes I don't. I have two deadlines ready. Unless you're off on the Friday, yeah, then you'll yeah, get it done. done yeah. But just act like you're working on the Friday and you need to get something out for the Friday. That's fine. I've got, I, honestly, right now, I've got a backlog of content. There are so many people that mm-hmm. need me to do stuff for them. I've got stuff I want to do. Yeah. 
I've got a backlog and I'm trying to fit it all in. Uh, they've been very, very... Um, patient? Yeah, I'll say patient. I was going to say compensating. That's not the right word. <laughs> They're very patient with it. So at least I understand. But um, but yeah, no, it's going to be interesting. So, I yeah. cannot wait for Expo. Yeah. So I want to see as many of you guys there. If you are going, leave a comment. I've given out some tickets before. Uh, we Any of your local Phoenix stores, go in there, speak to the members of staff. They will give you free tickets for the weekend. It's in London Olympia, which I believe is in Kensington um which is like southwest london You're asking me about geography yeah uh, you thought amsterdam was in ipswich yeah, we won't not, go into that story into this. it's fine but yeah i just wanted to touch on that <laughs> i just think it's gonna be mad mad weekend the content we're gonna have for you guys is gonna be flawless if you can't mm-hmm. make it it's all good uh i'll obviously still be doing my daily instagram stories as i always do if you're not following that make sure you check them out i'll put it on the screen uh as well as the normal content and just being there i just want to see so many people it's gonna mm-hmm. be so cool it's gonna be cool but I, rather than just waffle on about this, um, we have a Sherlock Holmes for this week. We do. And I think this may be the first time that I give you or the guest the hat and they actually give me the investigation because you're the one that brought this forward. That is true. Something you want to talk about, which is really, really cool. Um, so, yeah, if you give us specifically 10 seconds because of the edit, uh, we'll be back for this week's <laughs> Sherlock Holmes. See you in a sec. <laughs> Welcome back to the Chinnam and Yummies podcast. This week's Sherlock Holmes. We're actually passing the, the Deerstalker deer hat. Um, you actually get the privilege. Have you broken the pipe already? I had it already I'm set sorry, up I'm you. sorry. I'm playing with it. I've done it. I've cool. sorted it. Mad. <laughs> so <laughs> this week we are passing the Deerstalker over. You get the hat. You get the vape. Mm-hmm. Um, and you have the story to about. talk about. So, Yeah, boy. <laughs> I'm so glad that so someone cool, sent Thank you so it's much. Amazing. Thank you so much. It's the best thing ever. All right, I'm passing it over to you. So what Lovely. are we investigating this week? We are investigating the cardiovascular effects um, of switching from tobacco cigarettes to electronic cigarettes. So I'm kind of bringing a bit of science, a bit of nursing into it oh. um, because um, I have to basically search on like databases and everything. And I actually found this um, interesting article. Right. Um, I'm just going to... Put a mic across. Sorry. sorry, it's just my mic etiquette isn't exactly perfect. Yeah, I'm sorry. Watch more podcasts. <laughs> um, yeah. So as well as the hat, I've had to put my glasses on because I'm blind as about without, and hell yeah, there's no way I'll be reading anything without them. So yeah. So um, this study was done by a variety of scientists um actually from the uk from um the nine worlds hospital and medical school in dundee so just quickly how how long ago was this investigation done was it recent yes so this was published um i'll get into it okay all right yeah cool (laughs) so uh this was published in uh december 2019. So okay, so it's very, very, so very new. recent. Okay. And um, this was also published in the Journal of American College of Cardiology. So that means it was published in the United States as well, which I think is really good. Yeah, yeah, because definitely. Because it's given the US some science based. They just refuse to believe yeah, the truth. You know what I mean, it's given them some science behind how there is effect. Well, we're going to get into that. So. So going to the background of it, okay. um, it's saying e-cigarettes is increasingly exponentially worldwide. The early cardiovascular effects of switching from tobacco, tobacco cigarettes to electronic cigarettes in chronic smokers is unknown. Okay. Um, meta-analysis of flow-medicated dilation um, studies indicate 13% lower pooled adjustive relative risk of cardiovascular events with every... 1% improvement. Basically, I think what it's trying to say is... Um, it's been working out. <laughs> is that cardiovascular events seem lower in smokers, uh, in, lower in non-smokers to smokers. So it's not actually yeah, that's saying standard. about electronic cigarettes. Yeah, it says in, um, in electronic yeah. cigarettes is unknown at the moment. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> I'm not very good at this. <laughs> You'll be fine. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, so um, so going into so the objective of this study 
Um, so the study is sought to determine the early vascular impact of switching from um, a tobacco cigarette to electronic cigarette in chronic smokers. Okay. So chronic smoking basically means long term. Right. So you've got chronic, which is a long term thing, and then you've got acute, which is more of like a short term thing. So for example, um, if I give an orthopedic example, so like arthritis is a chronic condition because it's something that... Um, it's been long term. Yeah, it's been long term basically. Whereas like a fractured ankle, anything that you've broken that can be healed, that's an acute injury basically. Okay. So this is sort to determine um, vascular impact. So basically that's, so cardiology is all your breathing, your heart and everything. So the impact of that um, over a long time. So the authors conducted a prospe- prospective Randomized controlled trial with a parallel non-randomized preference cohort of blind end smokers. So actually understand what this says. Um, basically, it's random. So they got um, smokers and it says smokers of 18 year, eighteen and above who smoke Good. 15. <laughs> Someone who's yeah, having kids, 12-year-olds yeah, just <laughs> chuffing 20 a day. Um, and it says... Um, Individuals as well who smoke 15 plus cigarettes a day okay. for two plus years. Um, and they're already free from any established cardiovascular disease. So that's kind of all tested beforehand. Um, and they haven't got any current diseases because if at the end of the test something yeah, is found. Yeah, you've got variables. Yeah, you yeah, need yeah. a baseline. So everyone's basically. all the same. Yeah. Um, so participants were randomized to electronic cigarettes with nicotine and electronic cigarettes without nicotine for one month. Okay. Uh, Those unwilling to quit with the tobacco cigarettes in parallel preference. Um, So basically there were some that weren't um, completely compliant, basically. So there were some, so from what I can read, so there's three groups. So there's one group that had, that had electronic cigarettes um, with nicotine, one, uh, one group with electronic cigarettes without nicotine and another group um, who weren't, totally compliant basically so that kind of affects the results of course um they didn't stick to the rules so um let me just kind of break this down a little bit because it's like a lot (laughs) that's cool (laughs) it's a lot of writing do your thing so vascular function was assessed by um fmd okay which is i just read it FMD. I just read it. Flow meditated dilation. Okay. Right? I have no idea what that is. I don't know either. Okay. Sweet. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm, I'm not a lung nurse. I'm a, I'm a bone nurse. <laughs> um, I'm guessing... I mean, because it's also speaking about um, and pulse wave velocity. So this is to do with the heart and how it kind of reacts to yeah, nicotine and, and all the other stuff. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, so it says compliance with electronic cigarettes was measured by carbon monoxide levels. Oh, yeah. Yes. <clears throat> so results. Within one month of switching from tobacco cigarettes to electronic cigarettes, there was a significant improvement in the endothelial function. So endothelial, that's like your lungs and everything. So your lung function went up. Yeah. Or, you know, improved in that's terms of performance. That's your lungs and your heart. That's it's kind of the respiratory the system. Yeah, basically. Okay. And vascular stiffness. Ooh. Females benefited from switching more than males did in every group um, between the comparisons. Um, it says those who complied best with the electronic cigarette, uh, electronic cigarette switch... Uh, demonstrated the largest improvement. So it's basically saying that... The more um, committed you are to vaping, then Yeah, the, so I the said longer... basically there was more a group of people that didn't comply as well. They had worse results, basically. Yeah, but, if you were smoking and vaping, mm-hmm. that's a lot of nicotine. But overall, they still had improvement. Yeah, of course. not as much as the people who... Actually stuck to vaping. ...committed to the electronic cigarette swap. Woo! Um... So there was no difference in vascular effects between the electronic cigarettes with nicotine and without t- a nicotine within the study time frame, which was only a month. But basically it's saying something. there is, yeah, it's basically saying there's no vascular effects. But I mean, nicotine is something that affects the brain more than the body. Yeah. Um, but that's good to have a scientific 
yeah, of course. You know, it's, it's been backed up. It's one of those things where I'm glad that there's now that they're making more of a. I wouldn't say more of an effort because they've always been doing the studies, but more of a an impact. It's like, cool, right? You, you, every, the general public is more unsure of this. We're going to do a study on it, and we're going to prove to you this way, this way, this yeah. way. Have mm-hmm. all the scientific facts. Yeah. You can't run away from it anymore. And I think with the UK being the you know the pro vaping capital of the globe, we are we've got we're the we're the ones with all the cards because we've done all this scientific research. We, we're one of the only nations that have our public health. Mm-hmm put first yeah. rather than money. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Our government are like, we'd rather scrap cigarettes and find the tax from somewhere else and have people living longer and healthier than going, yeah, it's bad for you. So buy them death sticks, uh, more tax, more money. Everyone dies quicker. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So I love little things like this. So yeah, so I mean, that's the main results and the conclusions were... Fake, um, don't smoke. Yeah, tobacco smokers, t- uh, particularly females, I'm not sure why, demonstrate significant improvement in vascular health health within one month of switching from tobacco cigarettes to electronic cigarettes. Switching from tobacco cigarettes to ele- electronic cigarettes may be considered a harms reduction me- measure. So basically, it's yeah. saying well, you are going to reduce your vascular harm to your body by swapping, by switching. Like you, see, you touched on this earlier in the podcast, and I think mm-hmm. it's, it's so true and detrimental. Education. Yes. We need to now we've got this industry to a standpoint where it's still in its infancy. It's still trying to grow legs. And every time it tries to grow legs, the media has some sort of negative backlash and it cuts them down again. Now we're at a stage where we can almost deflect the, the bullshit and be like, right, cool, we have proof now. Mm-hmm. And we now need to educate the general public. Now I'm not saying we need to eradicate smoking full stop. It's the same with anything, whether it's racism, whether it's I don't know, trafficking, drugs, mm-hmm. anything, anything you put that is bad or good. You will never eradicate it completely. There is always going to be a minority of people that still choose to do that. And that's because and they're that's not fine. educated. Yeah, well, that's fine. They're going to make their own choice. They'll, they'll, you know, if it's negative to the body, they'll find out the health risks. If it's negative to the law, they'll mm-hmm. get caught. Yeah. It's as simple as that. But overall, the general generalization of it, the more knowledge is power, mm-hmm. the, the more information you have. I think, I think in the UK, you can quote me on this. If you guys get the real, real stats, put it in the comments below. I think there's about 6.4 million smokers in the UK and only about a third of them vape, which is mad because everyone I see now vapes, Mm -hmm. which is crazy. But there's still a lot more education. And I don't want us to be the industry that's like, smoking's bad, make the switch because, you know, we're trying to be all goody goody. It should be a case of if you want to, we have everything you need, Mm -hmm. Um, which I think is cool. Yeah, it is. I just like that people, because I feel like the... The main argument you get with people where I feel like if anyone kind of sees me vaping, they're like, yeah, but do you know that's actually better for you though? They'll like, yes. they'll be like, oh, it, you know, I, I mean, I know we've got some research for this. Oh, you haven't got as much research as smoking. It's only been been around for a few years or whatever. It's been around for like 10 years now, right? Longer than that. It's roughly 10, 15 r- years. roughly 15. It's, like yeah. so it's still in its infancy. But what yeah. people cease to forget is smoking was propaganda. Yeah. When it first came out, it mm-hmm. was uh, advertised as a cool thing to do. Yeah. And they used to send it out on the front lines because they were like, well, they're going to die anyway. Yeah. They might as well enjoy something. But because of advertising, yeah. they made it like the cool, hip thing to do. And it's just kind of stuck. They've then regulated the laws of how they advertise it. We now have the medical research to go, yeah, that stuff kills yeah. you now. There may Jane. not be as much research because, yeah, it hasn't been around for as long as smoking has. But the current research, and there is... Like, like we say, this is an up-to-date current research. Um, there is not one that research is study. Better. There's not one research study that I've seen with vaping with a, uh, from a trusted source mm-hmm. that said anything negative about vaping. Exactly. Ever. Yeah. Uh, and take from that what you will. Yeah. I mean, this is a vaping podcast. We will vape mm-hmm. anyway. We were smoking. We've made the switch. And it's more for people. It's more just like I said, education. It's more mm-hmm. to have people, you know, calm people down. Uh, like I said, with the, U- the US flavor ban really rocked this country. Uh, I think we were very strong and we stood by it because we have the facts. Um, like I said, the US, they just, you can put the facts right in front of them and if they don't like it, it's fake news. Yeah. So, yeah. But I'm glad we're doing stuff like this. I was just thinking back to, um, I was actually recently listening to your podcast with Wigs. Yeah. Um, and he was bringing more like film side into it. And I was like, oh my God, like we don't see vaping on TV. We don't see vaping in films. Yeah. We see smoking and we've seen that for so many years. And even on television, in films, it's thought to be this cool thing. It's, it's, it's that, that alone is advertisement. 
I feel like. Do you yeah. know what I mean? You think, oh, yeah, and I, I even said in I want to be like my favourite actor and, and smoke or whatever. You know, I even said in that same episode, there'd be a backlash if it was vaping mm-hmm. and they just switched it. People were like, why? Do you I know just, what I mean? I just hope... Um, I just hope this is going to more or less change. Like like you said that you... Um, you were reading that smoking is going to be eradicated by 2030. Is that right? In this country, that's what yeah, they're trying to do. Yeah, in this country. So I just hope that the next slowly, ten years are going yeah. to be detrimental to this mm-hmm. industry. I just hope that slowly, because I feel like I wouldn't be vaping today if I didn't get a nicotine addiction, and I got that nicotine addiction through smoking, through smoking because my friends told me it was cool, through smoking, peer pressure, yeah, all through sorts. peer pressure from watching it on. TV and film, like I feel, I feel like TV and film, that's something I really enjoy. It's something I watch a lot of. Do you know what I mean? Um, and I feel like that definitely has a big impact on people. And I wonder if in these next 10 years, in TV and film, that is actually going to... Uh, I, I, to... I just found it really interesting when you and Wiggs were talking about it last week. I said to Wiggs, if it needs to be for a short film, I will yeah. vape in it, not a problem. Yeah. <laughs> but no. So yeah, what do you guys think? Do you think that there are still people you need to educate or, you know, people that just will not accept scientific evidence? Mm-hmm. What do you think of the study? Do you think that uh, it's a positive step to to kind of prove other nations and, and even just the general public of the, the cardiovascular improvements in vaping? Just be interested to have your comments down below. I love hearing, talking to you guys and hearing what you guys have to say. And uh, yeah, it was really interesting. I just like to be like, science, bitch. Yeah, <laughs> science, bitch. <laughs> like, I just feel like when someone's like, oh, yeah, but is vaping actually better? I should be like, well, when you say carbon monoxide, science, do you know what I mean? Like I said, I'm a, I'm a qualified I mean, stop smoking practitioner. Yeah. I do a similar test across 30 yeah. days with individuals mm-hmm. uh, and seeing them, their carbon monoxide drop like a stone. It's proof in the pudding. People feel better. Even if you're not into the science, you just genuinely yeah, like, feel for, better. Uh, to be honest, like, I know basic respiratory you know system yeah. and what it does but i don't know like for example i didn't know what the f fmd meant but it's even kind of more or less broken it down for you to understand this is better this is not do you know what i mean well, and this let me is just something... ask you a question yeah when you were smoking how many chest infections did you get oh my god so many since like, you've been vaping, how many have you had? None. There you go. No. I've, I've, I've had, you know, the general viral cold or whatever, but I've never had a chest infection, which I'd need to... I, had, I haven't been on antibiotics to, you know, cure a chest infection exactly. since I stopped smoking. Exactly that. It shows what it does to your lungs. It's crazy. And it shows that, you know, in, like the things that people cough up as well, like isn't that proof in the... Like in the pudding, do you know what I mean? Seeing all that crap come off your lungs. Yeah, it's crazy. Well, this is definitely interesting. Yeah. It was very different. Oh, you know what? Something to bring up, just because I see this a lot also in healthcare. Um, I was talking about lungs and everything. Um, COPD, which is chronic obstructive pulmonary disorder, is such a big respiratory problem. Yeah, yeah. It's such a big respiratory problem. And I've seen... Like, not only have I seen the tests kind of done for it, and I've seen the way that, for example, like peak flow monitors, the the volume in which someone can exhale is completely diminished, basically, by long-term smoking. And you should see their x-rays of lungs, and they are just filled with secretions, which is built up over time, over smoking. Like, and I think that's also, like, a massive kind of whoa yeah. for someone. And... and I know, like that isn't available for everyone to look at, but I mean, you can go and go onto you uh, go onto. I was about to say YouTube, but I also said Google, and I said Google. <laughs> Google, it's a new website that you're creating. Google, <laughs> go onto um, Google and type in COPD patient lungs um, X-ray or something, and you will you're see blown away. how disgusting it is. Yeah, like it honestly is. For most of our customers uh, that are skeptical about vaping, it takes something like that mm-hmm. for them to walk through the door. Yep. Oh, I can't do it anymore. So I need to do this. Yeah. And we're obviously here to help. But you just go, oh, okay, just knock over everything. Um, it, you kind of take a step back and think, wow, it's taking something like that for you to realize. Do you know what I mean? And that, that's probably fine. Everyone's different. Sometimes I think we were very fortunate to. Push more than another uh, for some people. It, you know, I think we're very fortunate at our age to embrace this new yeah. sort of era because it's nicotine replacement therapy, essentially. I think we're definitely two people that are very 
open to embracing new ideas, yeah. new concepts. Like we're definitely not, there's certain people um, and sometimes just, you know, the way they're kind of brought up that they're very set on certain opinions and they don't want to learn anything new because they know, you know, they've already always anything done what they've is done. scary. Yeah, basically. Like change is scary or whatever. So people don't, but I'm, I'm glad that we embrace everything. Like yeah, if yeah. you, you know, come home and tell me a new bit of information, I'll be like, right, like, tell me more about it. I don't want to be like, well, nah, because I know that this... Well, so you know on what Facebook, I mean? mate, must be true. <laughs> I hate them people. Like, I think people just should be open to new research yeah. and education. The more open-minded you are, the more you know. Because that's what science is doing. Do you know what I mean? Every day it is... They're doing all of these tests and studies to prove things to basically help healthcare, help live longer. I think it's outstanding in the last, mm. even in the last 30, 40 years, the average lifespan has in, increased so much yeah. mm-hmm. because of all the medical research. So, wow. That is uh, definitely a knowledge bomb that you dropped. I know. I really appreciate it. Thank you for coming on so much. I really do appreciate right. it. Um, I think that's probably a nice way to, to wrap up the podcast, to be yeah. fair. It might be a little bit shorter than normal. Um, but I hope you guys did enjoy. And if you did, be sure to leave a like. Remember to subscribe if you haven't already. And make sure there's notifications turned on. My voice did that thing. Every episode it does it. You enjoying my pipe? Yeah, mate. <laughs> give, give my pipe back. No. Oh. I'm Sherlock. <laughs> You're what today? I am Dr. Watt. <laughs> uh, I hope you guys enjoyed. And if you did, like I said, be sure to leave a like and make sure you subscribe and notification turned on. If you haven't, followed me on Instagram for my daily Instagram stories and please <clears> do. <throat> I understand I'm a bit late with setting up the uh, Chilling with the Amis podcast Instagram. Reason being is I want to have pictures of all my guests on there. There's a few guests I haven't seen to take a picture with because I've got to do it there and then. So once I've done that, it will be uploaded because I want it to be chronological order. I want people yeah, to be able to go right. on it and follow it through. So, uh, yeah, if you haven't followed me on Instagram, it'll be on the screen right now. And I shall see you guys in the next video. If I don't see you in the next video, I shall see you at Expo. Peace. You love that, don't you? <laughs> I do. <laughs>